The following video depicts how sometimes you may end up with a lacerated wound and how you're supposed to actually go ahead with the rest of the surgery and what is the possibility of the end result. It also tells you whether or not you need to take a suture in a case like this. This patient had an astigmatism about 1.5 at 175 degrees and after marking the 0 180 with a Mendes axis marker, we have marked and highlighted the steep meridian. Here you can see the 2.8 clear corneal tunnel being created. It's important to try and bisect the steep axis such that the incision is equal on either side of the steep meridian. And here you can see that an opposing clear corneal incision is also being created. An opposing clear corneal incision is fairly challenging to create because you're often making it with a non-dominant hand in a position you're not used to making it, but it works quite well in reducing the cylinder if the patient doesn't agree for a toric IOL. This is followed by the creation of both the sideboard entries, the capsular axis, and in this patient with a grade two polar cataract, a hydrodelineation to delineate the endonucleus after which we proceed with FACO. We now move to the FACO emulsification. Please do see what happens when the probe is introduced into the eye. There is a tear that seems to be occurring, which as the FACO starts, you will see it is progressing radially into the cornea. There also is an egress of fluid that constantly seems to be coming from this torn 2.8 tunnel. So the question is, do we stop the FACO at this point, suture the wound, make a new 2.8 tunnel and start? The decision was taken to continue because I could find that the chamber is still truly well maintained despite this excessive aggressive fluid. And I also found that as the phaco emulsification is progressing, the tear enlarged to a particular level almost at the beginning and didn't keep getting worse. If it did get worse, I would have stopped, taken a suture, abandoned this incision and made another new incision. Now, at this point, we get almost to the end of the phaco. This is just the epinucleus that's now being removed. And the tear in the wound remains static. Now, before we proceed to irrigation aspiration, the surgeon performs a viscofluid exchange. This, remember, is a polar cataract. And please note what the wound looks like. This is the high magnified view of the radial tear in the main incision. What caused it, one doesn't know. Why it did not proceed, one doesn't know. However, it maintained a stable chamber. Now, during irrigation aspiration, you do expect an excessive aggressive fluid. We are going to be able to successfully complete the irrigation aspiration, provided we're able to maintain a stable chamber and that does not compromise the surgeon in accidentally creating a PCR during IA. And as you can see, the chamber does remain stable during irrigation aspiration. Having successfully completed the irrigation aspiration, the doubt now is that how is this wound going to behave when we introduce a cartridge within this wound to introduce the IOL. Let's move to the IOL insertion itself. As you can see, the surgeon with care and caution introduces the nozzle, the tip of the nozzle into the wound and extremely slowly starts to inject the lens. Following the successful implantation of the IOL, you will notice that really there is no enlargement of the tear in the wound at all. Finally, the surgeon moves to hydrating the wounds. One needs to take significant care while hydrating these wounds because you don't have a stable wound. You've got a flap in the upper lip of the wound and therefore that might make hydrating slightly difficult. Now let's see how the surgeon manages to hydrate the wound. 
So first, it is the left end of the wound that is hydrated. And finally now, with significant care and caution, the surgeon hitches into the right anterior end of the wound and hydrates it too. This is followed by hydrating all the other wounds. And finally, we'll see what is the end result of this surgery. Despite a significant radial tear in the main incision and despite a significant manipulation of that tear with the phaco probe as well as while IOL insertion, we have what appears to be a fairly stable, well-settled wound at the end.